So you know, it was just a normal day. I was quietly browsing YouTube, and I came across a couple of videos that were showing how to install Linux on an old MacBook to kind of give it a little boost. And I was like, hmm, well, I have an old MacBook, MacBook Air. I don't really know what's in it. it. I know it's old, it's got an old Intel chip in it, but it's got a decent screen, it's really light. It's got a couple of USB ports, it's still useful. I still do use my MacBook Air, I'm using it right now. I'm using it as a screen record so I can show myself in frame on my camera here, on my iPhone that I'm recording this on. And then I'm also recording my audio with Audacity, which is a nice open source audio recording platform. And the reason I got the MacBook Air in the first place, I got it used a while back anyways, and I feel like it could be so much more. I could actually take it to work kind of as a daily driver since it'll have Ubuntu on it. We use Ubuntu at my job, so I think it'll be fun. So let's get started. All right, so let's run some benchmarks. I'm running Geekbench here before we inevitably blow Mac OS into the sun. All right, so this is a 2017 MacBook Air running Mac OS 11.6 with an i5 5350U 1.80 gigahertz CPU with eight gigs of DDR3 RAM. So let's go ahead and run our CPU benchmark. And once this is all done, I'll log these scores and then we will test again with Ubuntu installed. So I wanna see what the hype is all about. I've seen a couple of videos now where people are installing the newest version of Ubuntu on really old Mac Intel hardware, and it's actually performing better. I, I, you know, I want to say it's snake oil, but I, you know, I believe these sources and I want to try it for myself. And the process for making a flash drive to install Ubuntu with is super easy. I just download Rufus, a couple of clicks here and there, and you've got yourself a bootable flash drive with Ubuntu ready to install. All right, so it seems like this is going to take a while. So I'll gather the data when it's done, and then we'll jump over to Ubuntu and do our test over there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and say goodbye to Mac OS one last time. RIP, you've served us well. I've got my bootable Ubuntu USB here. Okay, so when I boot up, I press and hold the option key. That should give me the startup. Okay, my hard drive, so this is my flash drive. Now let's see what we get. Is it that easy? Is it that easy? I figured there would be some loops to jump through, some special firmware I'd have to install or something. That's too consumer friendly. Makes me suspicious. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. There is our lobster that represents Ubuntu 23.04. They always use a different like animal to represent their builds. I'm just gonna install Ubuntu. Try Ubuntu is if you want to use Ubuntu directly off the flash drive. So if you ever want to, uh, Use Ubuntu and just test it out. You can always just test it out from the flash drive. It won't harm your existing operating system unless you do the full install. Um, let's do just a normal installation. Uh, yep, we're gonna erase the disk. Yep, Apple SSD, pick my time zone. I don't even know, what could, what should we call it? Macbuntu? Macbuntu, I like Macbuntu. Of course we're going dark mode. I'm excited, man. I can have the best of both worlds. I can have an open source operating system and also a good piece of hardware because that's what Apple does best. I'll go ahead and get this install finished up and then I'll run my benchmarks and I will meet you at the result. All right, so I've got Ubuntu installed on the MacBook Air. It took me a little while because I did have to figure out how to get drivers installed so it could use the wireless antenna that's in there because it doesn't have an ethernet connection and I can't quite find my USB to ethernet adapter because I don't use it very often. So I had the genius idea of just plugging in my iPhone as a tether and gave it a uh, internet through the tether through the USB and uh, I was able to actually connect to the internet install drivers get everything updated make sure everything was updated upgraded Ubuntu was in the most up-to-date state it could be in for the MacBook Air and then ran the benchmarks and I found something very weird it almost looks like it's halved the performance of when it was using Mac OS to now when it's using Linux don't ask me how don't ask me why I'm running another Geekbench test just to be sure but the numbers that I'm getting aren't quite adding up to what I thought I would get. So I don't quite understand. But the, the results of the second bench test just came through. So let me check. Not, yeah. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, that's what my networking teacher told me. Okay, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. This test is better. It's actually better. Like, literally better. So the macOS version, like I said, scored a 945 single core and an 1834 multi-core. The test I just ran on Ubuntu again, didn't change anything, just reran the script, that's it. It's command line script, you just run it and let it let it cook. Let it cook, 
and then just spit me out a 988 single core and a 1958 multi-core. So I've got a small percentage increase, but an increase nonetheless. So the YouTube videos were right. I'm, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doubting them. I wasn't doubting them. I promise. I, I didn't doubt you for a second. Okay. I doubted you for a little while there because I got half the performance and I started freaking out like, Oh God, I just bricked my, my freaking MacBook. All right. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm going to go ahead and do some more testing and I'll record a little bit of footage that I'll put after this and show you what I'm working with kind of with the more finished product. If you like upcycling as much as I do and get excited when you can improve the performance of an old machine and get a little bit more out of it, then, you know, consider subscribing. Till next time, peace.